Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 11.2 of representing vectors. 11.2 of representing chapter 11, section 2 of the Pearson A Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. A 2D vector can be expressed using number 1, i and j notation, number 2, column vector. Consider the vector A squiggle. As a column vector, you can write this as xy, and in ij notation, this is written as xi plus yj. For example, Consider the vector a squiggle which is equal to 2 minus 1 as a column vector. In ij notation, you can write it as 2y minus j. Now 2y minus j, you can represent it on a coordinate grid. The horizontal axis represents x which represents i. The vertical axis represents y which represents j. Now 2y minus j, what does that look like? Well 2y indicates 2 units to the right, so you have 2y here, and the minus j indicates 1 unit going down. So you have minus j. So 2y minus j, this is your overall vector, a squiggle. A unit vector is a vector of length 1. So if um, a vector has length 1, we call it a unit vector. The unit vectors along the x-axis and the y-axis are denoted by i and j, respectively. So the vector i squiggle is represented in column vector form as 1, 0, and the vector j squiggle is represented in column vector as 0, 1. A vector a is parallel to the vector b if a is equal lambda lots of b. In other words, if a is a scalar multiple of b. So lambda is your scalar, a fixed number. These are the key facts of 11.2 representing vectors. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Here is exam style question 1. Given that c is equal 3i plus 4j and d is equal i minus 2j, find mu if mu c plus d is parallel to i plus 3j. Let's have a look at the solution. Ladies and gents, I'm going to first of all simplify this vector over here, mu c plus d. So what we have here is mu c plus d. So mu lots of the vector c, I can rewrite it as a column vector and it will be 3, 4. So the i component is 3 and the j component is 4. Plus the vector d. So if I rewrite the vector d as a column vector, the i component is 1 and the j component is minus 2. Okay, so now we can multiply the 3 and 4 by mu. So if I do this, I get 3 mu and then 4 mu. We're going to add this onto the vector 1 minus 2. So we add the i components and then we add the j components. So as a single column vector, the i component will be 3 mu plus 1, and the j component will be 4 mu minus 2. So that there, ladies and gents, is the vector mu c plus d. Now in the question, we are told that mu c plus d is parallel to i plus 3j. So we can write down mu c plus d is parallel to i plus 3j. So we can go back to the definition of parallel vectors. This implies that this vector here, which was 3 mu plus 1, 4 mu minus 2, has to equal lambda lots of the vector i plus 3j, which in column vectors written as 1, 3. So we can multiply the 1 and 3 by lambda giving us lambda 3 lambda. So we have that the vector 3 mu plus 1, 4 mu minus 2 is equal to the vector lambda 3 lambda. So now we can equate the i components. So if I equate the i components, I get that 3 mu plus 1 is equal to lambda equation 1. Right, let's compare the j components. We get that 4 mu minus 2 is equal 3 lambda, equation 2. So our target is to work out the value of mu. I can substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So sub 1 into 2. So if I do this, I get 4 mu minus 2 is equal 3 lots of the lambda where lambda is 3 mu plus 1. Okay, so now I can solve for mu. I've got 4 mu minus 2 is equal, expand the bracket, 3 times 3 mu is 9 mu, plus 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so 
4 mu minus 9 mu is minus 5 mu equal 3 plus 2, which is 5. Therefore, mu is equal minus 1. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question 1. Let's have a look at exam style question 2. The vector a is equal p minus q, the vector b is equal qp, and the vector c is equal 7, 4. Given that a plus 2b is equal c, find the values of p and q. Let's start by working out a plus 2b in its simplest form. So we have a plus 2b. Now a is the column vector p minus q plus 2 lots of b is the column vector q p. So we have the vector a p minus q plus 2 lots of the vector b. So we can multiply q and p by 2. This gives us 2q and 2p. Now we can add these two column vectors. So if I start by adding the i components, I get p plus 2q. And then I can add the j components, I get minus q plus 2p. Right, so the vector a plus 2b in its simplest form is this vector here, where the i component is p plus 2q and the j component is minus q plus 2p. So this vector here, which is a plus 2b, has to equal the vector c, which is 7, 4. Since the two vectors are equal, we can now generate two equations. Firstly, we can compare the i components. So over here, the i component is p plus 2q. And over here, the i component is 7. So these two things are equal to each other because the vectors are equal. This is my first equation. In the same way, we can compare the j components in order to arrive at the second equation. So the second equation would be minus q plus 2p is equal 4. Second equation. Now we have to solve these simultaneously. Firstly, I can start off with the first equation and make p the subject. So if I do this, I get p equals 7 minus 2q. Equation 3. So now I can substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So if I do this, I get the following result. I have minus q plus 2 lots of p, which is 7 minus 2q. This must equal 4. Expand the bracket. So minus q plus 14 minus 4q has to equal 4. So we have minus 5q is equal minus 10. Hence, q is equal minus 10 divided by minus 5, which is 2. Okay, that there is the value of q. Now I can substitute q equal 2 back into equation 3 to work out the value of p. So for p, we would have 7 minus 2 lots of 2. So p is equal 7 minus 4. Hence, p is equal 3. Therefore, the solutions are p equal 3 and q equal 2. This completes exam style question 2. Let's have a look at exam style question 3. The resultant of the vectors a equal 3i minus 2j and b equal pi minus 2pj is parallel to the vector c equal 2i minus 3j. Find part a, the value of p. Now over here we need to go back to a key fact in mechanics. And that key fact is the resultant of the vectors a, b and c is given by adding the individual vectors. So the resultant of these three vectors will be a plus b plus c. Now let's proceed with the solution in part a. So what we have over here is that the resultant of the vectors a, b is basically the vector a plus b. So a as a column vector is 3 minus 2 plus b as a column vector is p minus 2p. So we can add these two vectors to get the resultant in its simplest form. So if we add the i components, we get 3 plus p. And if we add the j components, we get minus 2 minus 2p. Okay, so what we are told is that the resultant of a and b is parallel to the vector c equal 2i minus 3j. So this vector over here, 3 plus p, 
uh, minus 2 minus 2p has to equal lambda lots of the vector c, which in column vector form will be 2 minus 3. Now we can multiply the i and j component by lambda, we get 2 lambda and minus 3 lambda. So this vector here is equal to this vector. We can generate two equations by comparing the i and j components respectively. So if I start by comparing the i components, I get that 3 plus p has to equal 2 lambda. Equation 1. And if I compare the j components, I get that minus 2 minus 2p has to equal minus 3 lambda. Right, so now I want to work out P. I can solve these two equations simultaneously. I'm going to proceed forward by first working out lambda. Now to work out lambda, I can make P the subject in equation 1. So if I do this, I get P equal 2 lambda minus 3. I can call this equation 3. So now I substitute equation 3 into equation 2. So if I do this, I get minus 2 minus 2 lots of my P which is 2 lambda minus 3. This must equal minus 3 lambda. So I've got minus 2 minus 4 lambda plus 6 equal minus 3 lambda. Minus 2 plus 6 is just 4 equal minus 3 lambda plus 4 lambda is just lambda. Therefore, lambda is equal 4. Now to work out P, I can substitute lambda equal 4 into equation 3. So my P is equal 2 lots of the lambda, so 2 lots of 4, take away 3. So p is equal 2 times 4 is 8, take away 3 is 5. That there is the solution to part A of the question. Now moving on to part B. We want to work out the resultant of the vectors A and B. So that resultant was A plus B, which is um, 3 plus P and minus 2 minus 2p. Since I've already got my p, I can substitute that back in to work out the resultant. So I've got 3 plus 5 and then I've got minus 2 minus 2 lots of 5. So the i component is 8 and the j component is minus 12. So that there completes part b of the question. This completes exam style question 3 and the teaching video 11.2 representing vectors. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.